In this Wiser Joomla video, I'm going to show you how to back up a Joomla site and restore it to a new server. And this is all done with a tool called Akiba Backup. What Akiba Backup does is it backs up your database and all of the files in your website and it creates an install file and it zips it all up into a special compressed format and then you can basically reverse the process and create the identical version of your website uh, on, on a new server or anywhere you like on your computer. Um, so once you've run your backup by pressing the backup now you're going to go to administer backup files and what you'll see is that this latest backup I've taken is here and it's status OK. Now normally I would download this backup uh, using FTP. Uh, it's slightly risky to do it through HTML but there is a way of doing it from right here. So we'll go ahead and download this JPA backup file to our hard drive. Now once that's backed up we're going to go to our new server and we're going to upload it to the new server and then run what's called kickstart. Now kickstart is a free tool that you get by going to akibabackup.com and you go to the download sections and what you want to do is make sure you get the latest version of kickstart. It's a PHP file with a couple of extra files in there that kind of help things run. So you want to also download these files as well. Okay, so we've downloaded the kickstart files and we've actually uh, ex expanded the zip because there's several files in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our cPanel of our new server. So now I'm on a different server and the first thing we need to do is create a database. So we're going to go into MySQL and we're going to call this up and then we're going to create the username for the database. We'll call it back and we'll give it a password and we want to remember to copy that. So we're creating a user, we've created a database and now we're going to add that user back to database and you can see I have quite a few here, up. And then we say add. Now what we want to do is keep track of the database username and database name. And we'll paste that into a, um, a, no a notepad somewhere where we can find it. And then we want to give all privileges to this user's access to this database. And there we go. So to review what we've done is we've created a zipped up file of our website called a JPA file with a Kiba backup. We've then gone to our new servers control panel, created a new database and a database user. And we've also downloaded the kickstart files. And so these are our main three elements. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the file manager and we're going to make sure that we're in our public HTML folder and we're going to create our backup directory. So we'll just call it backup and then we'll drill down into that directory and now what we're going to do is upload all of these elements. So here's the upload and we're going to choose the backup file which is dated. It has the name of the site, it's got today's date so we'll go ahead and select that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to FTP, the other way to bring these files up because I've got multiple files. So we're going to go to our server and we're going to go to the directory we just created. Connect there. And here we have our JPA file. It's 42 megabytes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to upload the kickstart files. Now in the kickstart folder there's a lot of different files here 
what we want is to choose our language so this would be English for me and then there's three other files there's a couple of jQuery files and kickstart.php and we're going to put those on the server and those go up pretty quick so now everything's in place we've got our database we've got our kickstart application and we've got our backup so let's go back to the browser and let's go to the website and into the folder and then in that folder we know that there is a file called kickstart.php so let's go ahead and hit that now this brings up a warning which basically just tells you that there's things that can go wrong but generally they don't so we'll escape and here you have the archive file. If there were more than one, you could select which one you like. And then you don't have to do anything here. You just press start. And what it's going to do is it's going to extract all the files that are in our JPA file. And there it is. Now we just click run the installer. And this is basically kind of a variation on a Joomla installer. So the first thing it does is it checks your server and it makes sure that all of the things that Joomla needs to run are in the green as they are. If any of these were red, you would want to change them with your PHP settings. Now up in the corner you'll see there's a button called Next. Now here's where we're going to add our database information. Now the old database information is stored so we want to clear that when this warning comes up and basically we want to choose MySQL I and where it says host name we want to put in localhost and now we want to go over to our text pad and we want to get the username of the database and make sure you copy this carefully with no white spaces and then we want to take our password and put that in the second field here and then lastly the database name so user password and database name and once that's in we click next and it's going to connect to the database it's going to restore all the data from the website into your database tables and we're done so now basically we've got the name of the site we've got the site email we've got um, the sender's name and we can click next I like to clear these FTP fields click next and this final screen it says remove the installation directory which you definitely want to do so you click on that it deletes it for you because that's a security risk and then the next screen you're gonna see is a copy of your website only this one is not on the original server it is on our test server and if you click on this other tab it'll say clean up this is going to delete the backup file and clean up the kick start files you don't have to do this you could do it manually manually but if you hit it there then it's going to say visit your front end or your site's back end and here is where we would enter into the back end of Joomla. So that's it. We've just restored a Joomla site in about 10 minutes. Thanks for watching.